one of India's best known institutions of science. Set up by physicist Dr. Homi Bhabha in 1945, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research is a globally renowned science research institution. But few who walk into the picturesque setting of the institute realize that it is also home to one of the most prized collections of modern Indian art. Works of some of the greatest artists in India sit side by side with shelves lined with books on science. At the office that Dr. Homi Bhabha once sat in, TIFR's director, Dr. Sandeep Trivedi, explains how science and art met in Bhabha's world. Yeah, I think in a deep sense for Dr. Bhabha, science and art were connected. This is what I feel. You see, he was a very creative person, but also one with very refined sense of aesthetics and beauty. And if you look at his own work in science, it was a conscious pursuit of both beauty and truth. And I think he saw the parallel in art. As an accomplished artist himself, as a lover of music, he saw that parallel. And he saw that the creative process in science would be furthered if there was an engagement with art. And so he tried to actively bring that about in TIFR. Like everything that Baba put his mind to, the art collection that he put in place was also meticulous. An artist himself, Baba wanted this institute to also be a patron for a rising generation of artists, and for this he got the support of the Prime Minister. In the initial years, TIFR was allowed to use 1% of its annual budget on art. And Baba brought together the best minds, including the likes of lawyer and art connoisseur Karl Kandalwala, who headed the Prince of Wales Museum, art critic Rudolf von Leyden, fellow scientist and mathematician Professor K. Chandrasekharan, and Mrs. Firoza Vardia to collect works of artists like K. H. Ara, M. F. Hussain, Susa Gaitonde, N. S. Bendri, Babu Rao Sadvelkar, Jahangir Sabawala, and many legends of the Indian art world. Art historian Mortimer Chatterjee has spent years studying and curating the canvases and sculptures in the TIFR collection. For me, uh, this collection really speaks to a particular moment uh, in the development of Indian art post-independence. And there is nowhere else really where one can come and see a collection grow uh, real time as it were as artists themselves are making work and really discover the development of a particular moment in such a complete manner. It simply doesn't exist anywhere else uh, in the country. So for me, TIFR is really a capsule of a very important decade, decade and a half um, of Indian art, Indian modern art. The 1950s and 60s were a heady time in India's art world. A new breed of artists were replacing the old and the newly established TIFR became one of the catalysts in this change. In fact, one of the centerpieces of the TIFR collection, this mural at the entrance, is closely connected to the new wave in the art world. The TIFR mural uh, really represents a high point in the acquisitions process for the collection. Um, 1962, uh, the campus is opened and we have a, a call out, as we would uh, refer to it today, to particular artists to make two scale models, maquettes of a mural that could eventually adorn the uh, entrance foyer of the campus. Who do you go to and who do you ask in 1962? Um, the advisory group looked to who are the most interesting artists of that moment. And in addition just to the, to the up and coming artists, they also made an exception in the case of Jamini Roy, the great uh, Bengal based artist who had been working and whose practice was known for decades prior to the 60s. And that seems to have been more a case of um, wanting not to upset the great man uh, during such an important competition such as this. 
Um, so the artists that we're interested in and who really are those in contention for winning the prize are people like uh, Satish Gujral. Uh, we have people like B. Prabha, um, N.S. Bendre, um, an educator, um, K.K. Heber, a leading artist um, based in Bombay. Interestingly, one of the artists who was approached for this mural was Pablo Picasso. The war with China and restrictions on forex payments made it unfeasible for him to be here. After the entries came the verdict. It was M.F. Hussein versus Rawal. We have a wonderful letter which Homi Baba actually writes to the advisory committee while, when they're in the point of time of choosing between the two artists. And he perceptively makes the comment that long term it is the Hussein work that will have longevity. Hussein spent two years in TIFR making this mural and he was paid a princely sum of 15,000 rupees for his work. Looking back, this choice seems to make sense. Hussein not only turned out to be the most successful artist of his generation, he also got the essence of what this institute stood for. I think Hussein, in a sense, tried to ask himself what was the central vision that was behind TIFR. And I think he got it absolutely right by painting this fantastic mural with this vibrancy and its colors and so on and capturing the excitement of India. Because he felt if TIFR can capture that excitement and vibrancy of India in science, then we will succeed and we will be world class and India will be world class. So I think you see the importance that that kind of art has around us in trying to inspire us. And I think it does inspire a lot of the scientists and students uh, to be in this environment. And it's not only people within TIFR, you know, when scholars come from abroad uh, and they look at the art and they look at the setting with the sea and so on, which is all, of course, Baba's vision, they're stunned. I mean, it's an institution, many have told me, with few parallels anywhere in the world. The story of the TIFR mural competition is just an interesting aside, a small part in a larger frame. At its heart, it tells us the history of modern Indian art through its defining decades, especially the 1950s and 60s. The first work bought is by an artist, GM Hazanis, who actually is not so well known today, um, but is an artist who links, in a sense, work which was being made pre-independence to work being made in the late 1940s, 1950s and into the period under discussion. So I find that work actually very interesting. Moving forward in that early 1950s period, um, there are works by major figures, people like V.S. Gaitonde, F.N. Souza, M.F. Hussein, of course, Gade um, and K.H. Ara, most of whom were active members of the Progressive Artist Group, uh, a group that was formed in around 1948 and lasted until 1953. So the TIFR collection is cognizant of that group, but it is not dominated by it. And that is actually a very interesting and very important point, because what we see in the 1950s in terms of acquisitions is a much wider group of artists than merely those who were members of the Progressive Artist Group. There's a move to abstraction which takes place in the late 1950s and really uh, is most prevalent in the 1960s and then that is reflected in the collection at TIFR. Homi Baba passes away um, very early in uh, an air crash in 1966, but that doesn't see the end of the collecting process. As we've discussed before, there's this wonderful advisory group that's been put in place um, right at the beginning of the acquisitions period. And they are then able to uh, advise the second director, MGK Menon, on acquisitions right through the 1960s and indeed into the 1970s. That is how the TIFR collection also has some great works by artists like Tayyab Mehta and Krishan Khanna. This collection also tells us a lot about how artists evolved through their works. In terms of 
the individual artists who are being collected um, by TAFR, um, there are a few who really were collected in depth. Um, and there is no other single artist who was collected as in depth as K.H. Ira. Um, there are over 20 works by him in the collection. What we now see is an extraordinary range of output by an artist who in the main is known only for his still lives and his nudes. In the case of TIFR, we have uh, landscapes, townscapes, and of course his masterpiece, 1976 work called Lest We Forget His Sacrifice which is a vertical work, probably around six feet in height, uh, which features um, an apocalyptic image um, of Christ being crucified on what looks like a mushroom cloud, underneath which is um, a kind of scene of death and destruction. And for a collection such as the TIFR, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, no less, to have a work that shows in such gory detail the after effects of a nuclear explosion um, is nothing less than extraordinary. This is just a snapshot of the TIFR collection. It has layers and layers within it, with works from artists like B. Prabha, Nasreen Mohammadi, Daverwala, Swaminathan and Hebber. Nalini Malani has experimented with her art, taking it beyond the traditional canvas. But this piece in TIFR is special for her. It was the first she ever sold. For Sudhir Patwardhan, an artist who is also a trained radiologist, TIFR is special as it brings together the two worlds of science and art. A bridge that is to be extended as scientists Viditha Vaidya and K. Sridhar of the TIFR Arts and Archives Committee are working on. I had my first show in 1966 at Pandol Art Gallery and that's when I met Professor Menon. Uh, and he said that he would like to continue the program of acquiring art for the TIFR just as uh, uh, Professor Homi Baba had done. And I was very thrilled that actually my first painting was bought by the TIFR. So I feel very thrilled about that. What I was be interested in, what did you see as the process of uh, acquiring art that was happening here? Was there a thought behind it? Were they going for a certain kind of artist? So what I, uh, those were times that we lived in as well. The, uh, it, it, was a modern, it was a kind of a modernist period, I mm -hmm. think, for India. We were a new country, a young country, uh, from 47 to 66. It's a very short period. And there was the kind of uh, enthusiasm about nation building and image making. Uh, at that time, amongst the seniors, it was more art for art's sake, and we were individuals. We, we were known for what we believed in, each one of us. Sudhir, would you want to come in uh, with your own uh, take on the uh, TIFR collection, what you see? I mean, I think you started your art career just a little after this. A little later, yeah. yeah. I, I came to Bombay around 73. Hmm. And uh, I think mid-70s, uh, I had some friends here in TIFR. And we used to come for programs at the auditorium. So that was my first introduction to the collection here. But that period was also a transitional period, as, as Nalini pointed out, that the earlier generation's preoccupations were with art for art's sake, in a sense, formalism, you know, honing uh, or sharpening the tools of their art and things like that, and a different vision. In the late 60s, you know, from 68 onwards, and through the 70s, the whole social situation changed. And we belong to a generation where uh, the social in, entered into the works in a much more uh, aggressive way, or aggressive or in a much more strong way. Uh, but the connections with the older painters remained very strong. They had really taught us to look at painting. One thing I remember about this 
and think about this collection, that there's hardly a bad painting in it, <laughs> which is something that's very difficult to say about any collection. Right. You know, so those 120, uh, two, 220 works or whatever, and the sculptures, each one of them chosen with an eye, mm. each one of them, you know, chosen for quality. So that's really something. So, in a sense, to take it forward, if this correction, as you were saying earlier, can in some way be opened out part by part, you know, section by section to a larger public. I think it will provide a great opportunity for artists, not only of my generation, but much younger artists and students to see what actually was happening mm -hmm. at that time. So in fact, there is a very interesting symmetry between the modernism that the works in this collection represents and the modernism that was responsible for setting up uh, uh, this kind of an institution. Okay. Uh, because I think, you know, as a, a, as a kind of pain to scientific modernity, uh, TIFRS is certainly a kind of a monument in that, in the way it was conceived, in the audacity with which it was conceived, you know, the architecture, and it was, so I think that represented a certain phase of um, not just art, but also public life in this country, you know, post-independence, uh, uh, life of optimism as Nalini was correctly saying, there was a lot of looking forward to. Uh, I wanted to bring you into the conversation with you to ask how would you think that, you know, we, what is the role that we as the Art and Archives Committee of TIFR, what, where do you think we are going? I mean, already, uh, you know, just maintaining such a collection, uh, face, one faces several challenges. But do you think that at a later stage, there's a possibility of going back to a phase where we are going to acquire new art or engage with new art or invite young artists to come and do a performance or have an installation here in TIFR? So I was struck by the point you made that we are in many ways a custodians of an art collection that we inherited over a period of time because our founding director and then a couple of directors after that built what was a remarkable collection. And we sort of take it a little bit for granted. We might be rushing from one corridor to another with our samples or with an experiment or thinking about something. And the two minutes we're standing outside a lift, we may be staring at a remarkable art piece and perhaps not necessarily aware of, of what was in the artist's mind or what this was. But for those few minutes of standing outside that you can actually be taken away from your preoccupations of your scientific existence to thinking, wow, this is pretty remarkable and I'm, I'm standing right in front of it. But in that sense, coming back to the question you asked, which is, as a scientific community, what is our engagement with the public at large? What is our engagement with the city of Mumbai? We are a little jewel in the city and how much is our interaction with the community at large? I think we open our windows in multiple ways. It could be by bringing students in to open our doors and share the science that we do. But we're also custodians of this incredible collection and it's our opportunity to open our doors and to be informed by what has happened in the art world as well. And so in a sense, it really is a little window into opening that world and breaking the barricades that have over time separated the humanities, the science and the arts into silos that don't talk to each other that much. And that's really unfortunate for each of those disciplines. And in fact, it is necessary for our long-term engagement with our own discipline that we open those windows more because we may see something from a perspective which we may never have opened our mind to, partly because we are only talking to those who think like us in our exploration of nature. And that actually makes us suggestion? very narrow. Yeah. Why don't you start a residency for artists? Yes, so this is a brilliant idea. Now, so, where would we get those sorts of ideas if we didn't start the dialogue and conversation? Right. And I'm most happy to be part of this yes. residency. <laughs> With TIFR readying to open its galleries to the public, it hopes to live up to the ideal that makes it what it is. 
a bridge between India and the world in science, and a place where the two worlds of science and arts come together in a celebration of the world we live in.